Welcome to the penultimate episode of the Spring Summer Chat with the Expert series. Thanks for joining us today, special presentation. And I gather that you've joined us despite the beautiful weather outside, so we want to thank you in advance. And we hope that you uh, are enjoying uh, and that you get out after today's presentation. For those that don't know me, my name is David Knapp. I am the program director for the New York City Department for the Aging's Bill Payer Program. Um, and what I want to start off with was letting everybody know that um, September is Kinship Care Month in New York State. This month is an opportunity to recognize the commitment of thousands of kin across the state who step in to care for children when their parents are unable to do so. So in honor of Kinship Care Month, the chat uh, will be presenting our very own expert on kinship care, Brandy A. Orange. She's the capacity building and learning coordinator for New York City's Department for the Aging, it's Grandparents Resource Center. The title of her presentation today is Kinship Care, What Is It? And our hope is after Brandy's presentation, everyone will know what kinship care is, who provides services, and why it is important to celebrate each year uh, the work of kinship caregivers, both in our communities, statewide, and hopefully one day nationally. So I just want to mention, as I always do, that this webinar is being recorded. And at this time, I'd like to introduce the Commissioner for the New York City Department for the Aging, Ms. Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, for some pre recorded opening remarks. Take it away, Lorraine. Good afternoon. I'm Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, Commissioner of the New York City Department for the Aging. I'm very excited to welcome you to this new virtual series, Meet the Expert. This series focuses on an important issue, which is your financial health, your financial empowerment your financial literacy, and also giving you tools to combat financial fraud. Like physical health, financial health is a cornerstone of living a happy, successful, uh, relaxed life. With increased financial wellness, individuals can enjoy retirement and be better prepared for, life, for life's unexpected uh, challenges. At the core of financial help is knowledge and empowerment. Many times there are financial issues that older adults in New York face that on the surface seem daunting, like, should I file for bankruptcy? How does a reverse mortgage work? Knowledge encompasses one's life's goals, challenges, and available financial resources are here to help you. Those experiencing financial wellness often experience a greater sense of empowerment, reduce stress and improve physical health. A house is only as strong as its foundation. Finances underlie each one of our daily lives. And it is important for us to create a space, a safe space where you can ask experts your most important questions. And that is why we designed the Meet the Expert series. Often people just don't know that these services exist to address their major concerns. This series is meant to replicate an intimate in-person chat. Through, through these series, you're gonna get expert advice um, on things that are part of our daily lives, choosing the right financial institution, when to seek out a financial advisor, the latest online smart budgeting tool. I'm looking forward to learning about that one. The do's and don'ts of refinancing your home and online banking security. And the recent COVID-19, those many scams and schemes that have, have emerged, just to name a few. Our goal is to help you to get to answer your questions and are on all of those pressing financial needs. Hopefully you will get the information that you need, access to an expert, as well as a few new tips on uh, how to use these valuable resources that you're getting. Join us, join the series. I'd like to thank PSS for helping us pilot this new series. Hope to see you at the Meet the Expert series Enjoy it. 
and we will test and see how safe and secure you feel after this series. Thank you very much. So thank you, Commissioner. Um, I'd like to remind everyone to use the chat to ask any general questions. We have staff monitoring the chat and Brandy will answer all of your questions following her presentation. Um, and then I'd like to also remind you again that this is being recorded. As a rule, please keep questions brief and general. Brandy will not be giving specific individual advice. Following today's webinar, we will be sending out resources mentioned in the presentation, along with the brief survey and a link to the recording in this webinar. Um, it was just actually posted in the chat. Um, you can look at this uh, webinar when it comes out in about five days or go to any of the previous webinars that we did. And now, without further ado, I'm pleased to present my colleague and friend, Ms. Brandy Awan. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you, David. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope everyone is well. Um, I hope you're having a good, a fairly good Monday. Um, and I wanted to say to everyone, happy Kinship Care Month. That's right. As David mentioned earlier, it is Kinship Care Month. What does that mean? That means that we are celebrating kinship caregivers. And in a little while, I'll talk to you specifically about who kinship caregivers are. But this month, not only are we celebrating Kinship Care Month, we're also celebrating National Grandparents Day. And many grandparents in this country and here in New York State and New York City are kinship caregivers also. So happy Kinship Care Month and happy National Grandparents Day. Um, National Grandparents Day actually happened a couple of weeks ago. It's usually the Sunday after Labor Day. Um, so this year we celebrated, I think, on the 12th. Um, so we get to celebrate two wonderful populations, kinship caregivers and um, grandparents. So if you know a kinship caregiver, if there's a grandparent or a great grandparent in your life that you love, please love them up, hug them and let them know how special they are. So again, happy Kinship Care Month, happy grandparent, National Grandparents Day. Um, so <clears throat> let's get started. Um, and talk a little bit about um, kinship care and what it is. So first things first, my name is Brandy Orange. That's my real name. Um, I'm from the New York City Department for the Aging, as David mentioned. I'm from a small unit called the Grandparent Resource Center. Um, the Grandparent Resource Center services grandparents and other kinship relatives who are raising children. And again, we'll talk more about kinship care in just a minute. Um, as many of you know, and some of you may not know, the Department for the Aging provides a lot of services to older adults here in the five boroughs. Um, we have a unit that talks to you about Medicare and health insurance, that's HICAP. We have a unit that um, helps seniors get back to work, um, our senior employment unit. We have a unit um, called Aging Connect. It's just like 311 for seniors. So if you're a senior and you have questions, you could call 311 and ask for Aging Connect. Um, and those folks on the phone who are trained social workers can answer your questions and your concerns. Um, we have um, volunteer programs like our foster grandparent program, all sorts of programs out there to help older adults in New York City. Um, and my unit, the Grandparent Resource Center is one of those units here at the Department for the Aging. Um, and again, we work with kinship caregivers. You're gonna hear that word kinship a lot today. Uh, we work with kinship caregivers and um, grandparents across the city. Um, so um, I'd like to talk to you about um, what kinship care is. So I'm gonna start with uh, talking about a little bit about me. I um, have been working at the Department for the Aging in the Grandparent Resource Center for about 15 years now. So I have become sort of the grandparent guru, the queen of kinship, queen with a K, the queen of kinship. Um, and I'm going to bring some information to you that you may not know, that you didn't know about kinship care, um, that you didn't know existed for grandparents and other relatives um, who are raising children, that there are some rights out there for kinship caregivers. There are lots of resources, lots of information out there, and lots of support. Um, so um, let's talk about 
um, the who, what, where, why, and how, right? What do you, what do I mean by that? So when I was in college, um, I didn't go to, to college for social work like many of my colleagues. I actually went to school for broadcast journalism and communications. And the first thing that we learned about was how to tell a story, right? And what to find out, what you needed to know in order to tell a news story, what was newsworthy. So in order to make something newsworthy, you needed to find out what the who, what, where, why, and how of a story was. You needed to find out all of those things in order to get a great story. So today, we're gonna tell a great story about kinship care. Um, so uh, first, we're gonna start with the what, right? So we're gonna be a little all over the place today. So we're not gonna necessarily go who, what, where, why, and how in order. We're gonna kind of be a little bit all over the place today. So listen up, You know, um, we may not necessarily follow exactly um, the PowerPoint, take good notes. Um, you'll be able to ask questions. My colleagues and myself are available to answer questions even after this series today. Um, but, oh, let me talk about my colleagues. So let me not forget about my fellow colleagues in the Grand Parent Resource Center, Helen Flowers, um, Grant Cruz, Antoinette Emmers, um, Rosemary Seapol, Frank McCray, Wendy Parada, um, and our consultants um, and our um, interns and our Title Fives. Um, we're a small team, but we do lots and lots of great things. I want to say thank you to them and mention all of the great work that they do. Um, but let's get into the what. What is kinship care? Kinship care is not so simple. Um, kinship care, a lot of people think kinship care has to do with um, just family in general. So like if you were taking care of your mom or you were taking care of a cousin who's an adult who may be sick, you know, kinship care is all about um, relatives and grandparents who are raising children. They're raising them because something may have happened with the parent, which will have to, uh, um, where they have to step in and step up and take care of the child because the parent is unavailable. So kinship care is when a relative, when relatives step up to raise children, when their parents can't care for them for the time being. And sometimes that time being could be six months. Sometimes that time could being could be a year. Sometimes that time being could be the child's lifetime, meaning from the time that the child is a newborn until they're 21 or 25 years old. Um, a lot of our kinship caregivers are caring for children um, at, from the day that they leave the hospital um, until they go on to college or start working. Um, so kinship care um, can be anybody, a grandparent, a great grandparent, a great aunt, a cousin, a step parent, um, a, um, a great uncle. Um, anybody in your family, it could be a neighbor, it could be some, anyone who's kin and familiar to a child. Um, and if that person has love and care for that child and the child knows them and they're able to live in their home, then that's what we call kinship care. So it has a vast definition. Um, just recently, there was a law passed to extend what kinship care is about, and I'll talk about that in, in a second. Um, but you, um, before this law was passed, and this was just in July, just this past July, um, kinship care really just referred to grandparents and great grandparents. Now it could be anyone who is kin or familiar to the child. Um, so, so that's the what, right? So what is kinship care? Um, and also um, just a note, there are 2.7 million children in kinship care in the United States living with a grandparent, aunt, cousin, sibling, what have you. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about how grandparents and other relatives are raising children. So first things first, if you're taking notes, write this down. Informal care is legal. What does that mean? Informal care is very legal. Lots of people think that you have to have custody or guardianship of a child or adopt them or have some sort of legal tie to a child in order to raise them here in New York State. That's absolutely positively not true. Informal care is very, very legal, very, very legal. So it's okay for families to make arrangements and say, so that means that 
um, my mom, let's say my mom was Helen Flowers, right? She's actually my supervisor, but let's say my mom was Helen Flowers and I was having some um, <clears throat> trouble um, with um, abusing alcohol. And I know that I need to get some help. Um, I can go to my mom, Helen Flowers, and say, mom, I'm going to need you to take care of the kids. I really need to go into a program now. I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I really need your help. Um, and if mom agrees, grandma agrees, then the children could go stay with grandma. They don't have to call anybody. They don't have to call ACS. They don't have to go to the court. It could just be an informal arrangement between that particular family. Those things are okay. So most grandparents who are raising grandchildren and other relative caregivers are raising their children um, informally, no custody, no guardianship, nothing like that. Now, it is perfectly okay for me to write a letter that says, I, Brandy Orange, give my mother, Helen Flowers, permission to care for my children with all of their education and medical needs. It can have coffee stain on it. It could be an old piece of paper as long as we can get it notarized. That's a binding document. And it's okay for, fa for that family to have made that arrangement and mom to have give permission to her mom to take care of the children. So many of you might say, well, how does that work? How are they able to, to, get, to get things for the children? How is grandma gonna be able to register the children for school? Well, those things can happen even without custody and guardianship, even without custody and guardianship. Okay, so now, so most grandparents are raising their grandchildren informally. Some grandparents do have custody. Some grandparents do have guardianship. Custody and guardianship are very similar. Um, not quite the same, but very similar. The biggest difference between custody and guardianship, when you go down to family court to file a petition, anyone has a right to file a petition. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get custody or get guardianship. Um, um, when you go down to file a petition for guardianship or custody, uh, you um, have to um, fill out lots of paperwork. There's lots of information. You have to sit with the judge. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get it. You certainly have the right to do so. But in some cases, in the guardianship case, you may have to be fingerprinted. Okay. Um, there's, um, that's the biggest difference between custody and guardianship. They're very, very similar. Um, but, and, and we can break down those things down later on if we have time for questions about the similarities and differences. Um, but many families have custody, many have guardianship. Um, there are some families where the children go into foster care, kinship foster care. Um, that means that the child was removed from their parents' care um, by ACS or CPS. Um, it's ACS here in New York City. Um, and then the child um, um, needed to go live with the parent, the grandparent or the aunt or the cousin, whomever the kinship caregiver is, because the situation at home may not have been safe for the child. And then um, kinship foster care could be given through a series of different things to ensure that the grandparent or the relative caregiver, the kinship caregiver is able to take care of the child in their home. So some families have them informally, some have custody, some have guardianship, some get kinship foster care. The kinship foster care that I was talking about um, has some money that's attached to it. The child gets a check once a month in order for the caregiver to take care of them. Um, and then there are some families who get something called KinGAP, which is subsidized guardianship. So that means that the children are no longer in foster care, but the family is still able to get monies in order to take care of the child. So that would be the subsidized guardianship, okay? And then there are some grandparents and relative caregivers who are raising their children through adoption. There's two different kinds of adoptions. Some adoptions happen privately, and there are some adoptions that happen through ACS after the child is in foster care. So again, some families are raising them informally. That's most grandparent families here in New York City and across the state. There are some who have custody and guardianship. There are some who have kinship foster care, subsidized guardianship and adoption. Next slide, please. So we talked a little bit about the what, and we talked about the how, how grandparents and relative caregivers are raising children. Next slide for me, please, Kevin. 
So let's talk a little bit about why grandparents are raising grandchildren, the reasons why grandparents are raising grandchildren. There are many, many, many different reasons. The number one reason, before we talk about all of these things that are listed here, is love. <clears throat> Most of our grandparents and relative caregivers, aunts, cousins, godparents, uncles, um, family friends are raising the children out of love, right? Even if they haven't even met the child before. Um, meaning it could be a situation where mom lives in Florida, grandma lives here in Brooklyn. Um, somebody gives grandma a call and say, mom's not doing so well. Can you come down and get your grandchildren? The grandchildren may only be two. She may not have seen her daughter or her son for five years. She goes down, grandma or great grandma or auntie goes down to pick up the children from Florida and brings them back to New York City, right? She may not even met the children, but she loves them no matter what. So a lot of this is about love and not just all of these different things that we have listed here. But some of the reasons why grandparents are raising and other relatives are raising children, child abuse, family violence, incarceration, teen pregnancy, mental illness, um, deportation, um, military, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, there's recently been a huge uptake in um, grandparents and other relatives raising children since COVID-19. Unfortunately, there have been many parents who passed away from COVID um, or COVID complications, and a family member has had to step up and take the child because of that. Um, we haven't seen an uptake like this since the crack um, and HIV AIDS epidemic years ago in the 80s and the 90s. So, um, there have been um, a few articles written about it. Um, there have been lots of services and more information out there. Um, and this law that was just passed because of, as a result of the um, COVID-19 pandemic and um, all of the children who are being raised by their relatives now. Um, so there are many reasons why grandparents are raising grandchildren or relative caregivers are raising children. There's usually an adult child in crisis. The adult is having some sort of crisis and those reasons are those crises that could happen. Um, and there are lots of challenges out there that the caregiver may experience um, as a result of caring for the children. So housing could be a big challenge. Housing could be a big challenge. So if you're a senior, um, and you are living in senior housing and now you need to take care of two of your grandchildren who are under the age of 21 or under the age of 18, um, that housing situation could be difficult for you because you live in senior housing and only seniors are allowed in that particular apartment building. Um, finances could be a problem. A lot of our kinship caregivers, and we'll talk about this in a little while, um, are, are living in um, situations where they don't have a lot of money. They may be impoverished um, even before the children come to them. Um, knowing your rights. Um, um, at the Grandparent Resource Center, um, we provide some lots of workshops and information and resources um, to teach kinship caregivers about what their rights are concerning custody or guardianship or what their rights are in general. Um, the issue about the generation gap, family dynamics, parenting, navigating city systems, the digital divide. You know, um, a lot of our kinship caregivers are over the age um, 50. Many of them are 60 plus and may not necessarily be that proficient on the computer. And we live in a computer world now. Um, the children that they're raising may know a lot about tablets and phones and, and websites and apps and social media. And the kinship caregiver who could be in their 70s may not know much about it. So the digital divide could be a challenge. It was challenging for many of our kinship caregivers um, through the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we at the Grandparent Resource Center were able to provide some tablets to some of our kinship caregivers and teach them how to use those tablets so that they can, one, of course, help their children with school, and two, learn how to navigate those tablets and websites and computers and social media themselves. Um, so there were some ups and downs to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, that was really a, a good chance for us to be able to provide a great service to our kinship caregivers. Um, next slide. So let's talk a little bit about statistics. Um, 
there are thousands of grandparents raising grandchildren across the country. I'm not going to read everything on the slide. Um, this information is pretty up, date, up to date based on the last census. Um, but there are the first line, there are 130,000 um, um, plus kinship households that 65% of kinship caregivers um, are grandparents. Um, so you got to think about that. That number has um, grandparents and kinship caregivers in it. Um, so um, there are um, about 130,000 kinship households um, and that 65% of those kinship households are grandparents, okay? Um, so many of the kinship caregivers across New York are having a tough time. Um, they don't know a lot about fi financial resources. They don't know about legal standing, but there is the Grandparent Resource Center and many other kinship programs that are around to help. And at the end, there's some information on some of those other kinship programs and resources available to anyone who needs it. And you can also call um, Aging Connect here at the Department for the Aging. All you have to do is call 311, ask for Aging Connect, and they can connect you to us here at the Grandparent Resource Center so that you can find resources. Um, next slide, please. Um, in New York State, um, in New York City, let's talk about New York City, I'm sorry. In New York City, there are 68,000, about um, 69,000 grandparents and other relatives um, that are raising children in New York State. That actually, that actual number, I'm sorry, is just grandparents. So the number for kinship caregivers in general is probably a little bit higher at about 80 um, thousand um, grandparents and other relatives raising children. Um, the, the, what we find is that um, most of the families are um, African American, the families that we serve. Um, many of the families are Hispanic and Latino. We have some Asian families, some white families. Um, but most of the families that we serve are African American. The uptake also in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic um, has been um, in African-American families. Um, we're seeing more and more African-American families coming to us um, in terms of kinship care. Um, about 129,000 of those grandparents um, are responsible for raising those grandchildren. 62% um, are under the age 60, 22% live in poverty. Um, that number is probably a little bit higher once the children come into the grandparents' household. Um, the, the, a lot of the grandparents, a lot of the relative caregivers who are caring for children are not just caring for one child, they're caring for two or three children at a time. We have one family that we're working with where grandma is raising seven kids at one time. That's right, seven children. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so just recently, um, as recently as July 16th, 2021, um, there was a legislative act to amend the social service law, right, in relation to, divine, to defining kinship caregiver. So earlier I mentioned that there were some changes that were made to the, the term kinship caregiver. At first, we were just talking about grandparents, maybe great grandparents, but now kinship caregiver means aunts, uncle, uncles, cousins, step-parents, um, family friends, godparents, right? Um, so that bill allows, um, which was it turned into law, um, that bill allows kinship caregivers to have a lot more leverage in terms of finding services, getting services, um, making sure that people know about kinship care and what kinship care law is, um, know about um, what kind of services are available to kinship caregivers so that they can refer families to um, kinship services. Next slide, please. That law was um, put into place by Andrew Hevesy and Assemblywoman Persuade. Um, my colleague and I actually got a chance to meet Alan Hevesy just the other day and talk to him and thank him and talk to him about um, how this affects our kinship caregivers. Um, and this was great for a great triumph for kinship care um, across New York State. So this bill, the benefits of the bill, 
remove some roadblocks, right? So there's still gonna be some roadblocks because it's new to folks, but it's gonna help with housing, legal assistance, um, childcare, the eligibility to enroll children in school, which is possible now. Um, you just have to make sure that you have the right documentation and documentation doesn't necessarily mean custody or guardianship. Um, in New York City and in New York State, um, because informal custody is legal, there's something called um, person and parental relationship, person and parental relationship. So that means that you don't have to necessarily be the parent, meaning mom or dad, right? In order to enroll your child in school, you can be in the person in parental relationship. So that means that you're acting as the parent at the time um, and you're able to enroll children in school, find out about what's going on with the child, issues with their IEP, all kinds of things. Um, this bill also is going to help benefit taking children to the doctor. Um, you, there are some documentation, some things that you may need, but in, in many cases, you don't need to have custody or guardianship. Um, and it's also gonna be able to let people know that, um, that the kinship care is here to stay, that there are services, there are resources, there, is all, there are all sorts of um, avenues for kinship caregivers to take to find out about what's available to them. Um, meaning that they could call 311, they could call the National um, Family Care Caregiver Support Program, they can call the um, New York State Kinship Navigator, lots of avenues to find out about resources. Call the Grandparent Resource Center, call 311. Um, so this bill is going to be benefit all of our kinship caregivers. Next slide, please. Okay, so we talked about who kinship caregivers are, right? Grandparents, other relatives, um, aunts, uncles, cousins, godparents, right? We talked about who, we talked about um, what, what kinship care is. We talked about why grandparents are raising grandchildren, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about, we talked about how grandparents are raising grandchildren, right? Whether they have custody or guardianship or they adopted their grandchild um, or their niece or their nephew. So let's talk about when, when, um, who, what, where, why, and when. The when is always, the when refers to us at the Grandparent Resource Center um, and some of the other kinship programs that we work with. Um, we have some DIFTA funded programs that can actually provide some kinship care, um, meaning kinship care services. Um, and then we have some OCFS, Office of Children and Family Services, um, some programs that can provide kinship care services also um, through the state. Uh, we're connected with them, we train them and work with them to ensure that they're able to provide kinship caregivers with the best care and information and resources that they can. But the when refers to, to us. Um, when, when help is needed, we're there. When are we there? Always. We provide a, a compassionate listening ear um, at the Grandparent Resource Center, my colleagues and I, um, we give out pre-COVID a lot of hugs and love, and we still try to do that the best way that we can, whether we're in person, whether we're on the phone, whether we're doing um, workshops, whether we're doing a one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom or on a caregiver's phone, um, whether we're doing a home visit, we try to provide as much um, love and care and attention to the caregiver because a lot of the situations that the caregivers are in, um, the kinship caregivers are tough situations. You know, a relative caregiver could find out that their sister passed away. Um, and what do they do next? Um, uh, a mom could find out that her son is incarcerated and the mother had passed away a year ago and dad had full responsibility for the children and now he's going on to, um, to, to jail or prison perhaps, and grandma may need to step in. Um, those are tough situations and we try to do the best that we can to make sure that the families feel heard, loved and get the resources that they need. Um, we will connect any caregiver to the needed services, whether it's entitlement, legal assistance, housing, childcare, healthcare questions, um, um, any kind of senior services, referrals, we'll work with school, we'll work with ACS or CPS. We will escort a caregiver to court if necessary. Um, we try to do the best that we can 
to make sure that the caregiver has all the information and resources that they need. Um, and one of the biggest things that we do is advocate for our clients. Make sure that someone is speaking up on their behalf, making sure that their needs are met as well as the children's needs. Um, it's very difficult for many of our um, caregivers who are um, 55 and 60 and above to navigate some of the city and state systems. Um, you know, you could be you could be raising a, a grandchild and have not um, had any touch with the school system for 25 or 30 years. And school is very different today. Um, we can connect you with um, information and resources on the Department of Education um, and um, IEPs, things of that nature. Next slide, please. So that's the when, when we're always available. So a little bit about the Grandparent Resource Center. Um, those are some of my colleagues and some of our caregivers in those pictures. Next slide, please. Um, at the Grandparent Resource Center, again, we provide a lot of advocacy, a lot of love and care, the best that we can, um, and lots of resources. Part of the work that we do is providing, um, especially during COVID-19, we're starting to get back in person now. Um, uh, our virtual workshops. Um, we do a training called PASTA, P-A-S-T-A, -A, Parenting, again, for the second time around. Um, we have an empowerment series, which is going to be starting up in the next few days, um, that is actually taught by a college professor, and grandparents get a graduation um, after taking this college-level course with a college professor. It's an empowerment series um, that empowers kinship caregivers on um, how to advocate for themselves, how to make sure that their needs are met as well as their children, how to speak up to their politicians and, and school officials and say, hey, my child needs some help. My child needs some more, more assistance. Kinship caregivers need more assistance, right? So that's what that empowerment series is about. Um, we provide a lot of emotional wellness. We do um, nutrition workshops, entitlements. Um, one thing that I definitely need to mention in terms of entitlements is um, there's something called child only public assistance. Um, many times when kinship caregivers are um, becoming a new kinship caregiver, they need to find out about um, what financial um, services are available to them in terms of raising their grandchild or their niece or their nephew. And there's something called child only public assistance. Um, not every family is eligible. It depends on what's happening with the family situation, but most families are eligible. You do not need custody or guardianship in order to get the child only public assistance. The child only public assistance is just as it says, is for the child only. It's independent of the grandparent or the relative's income. So I'll give you an example. Um, let's say that um, Oprah had a daughter, right? And Oprah's daughter decided to run away to Bora Bora. She was having some trouble and she can no longer take care of her children. So Oprah's going to assume the responsibility of raising the children. So now we know Oprah has lots and lots of money, right? Um, and if she lived here in New York City, she would be able to apply for and get child only public assistance because it's independent of her income because parents are financially responsible for children. So that means if her daughters, uh, her daughter and the father of the child were not around, they're still financially responsible to take care of the child. Oprah is not. Um, so the child only public assistance, independent of the grandparents' income, um, anyone, can, anyone who's a kinship caregiver can apply for it. Um, certain circumstances um, revolve around who's eligible, but you certainly can apply for it. Most folks are eligible for it. If the child is getting another kind of income, possibly like social security, then they, you may not be eligible, but you could be eligible for Medicaid or food stamps. So um, if you have questions about that, individual questions about that, we at the Grandparent Resource Center and some of the other kinship programs, but especially at the Grandparent Resource Center, can certainly answer those questions for you about eligibility. Um, so um, there are some entitlements out there um, for kinship caregivers. 
Um, so at the Grandparent Resource Center, we provide a lot of workshops and information and resources, but the most important, I think, is advocacy. Advocating for and making sure our kinship caregivers get what they need in order to be the best caregiver they can be. If we can provide the, the, the best tools, um, they can be the best caregiver. Um, next slide for me, please. So we have lots and lots and lots of trainings out there for, for, for professionals. So the trainings that I was talking about earlier were, are mostly for um, our kinship caregivers, um, but we do have some trainings out there for, for, for professionals. Um, we have a sensitivity training where we um, provide training to a lot of city, other city agencies like ACS and HRA, um, the Department of Education, we have um, Kinship Care 101 for professionals. If you would like to see your staff have a Kinship Care 101 training um, that's a little bit more extensive than this, you certainly can give us a call and we can provide that training to you. Um, we have um, child-only public assistance workshops. We can do legal workshops with MFY Legal Services um, and with some of our case management agencies and kinship care programs, or if you have um, a case that you need some assistance with that involves a kinship caregiver, we can have case conferences, round tables. I like to call them like little TED Talks. I call them Brandy Talks. Um, and then of course, for our kinship caregivers, we do empowerment series um, and the PASTA training. But we have a number of trainings for um, professionals as well as our kinship caregivers. Next slide for me, please. Oh, keep going. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about our MAP program. We have a special program here at the GRC called the MAP program, the Mayor's Action Plan for Neighborhood Safety. Um, and we at the Department for the Aging, um, a part of the Mayor's Action Plan, um, we are set up in several di different um, NYCHA housing developments. Um, we are this, this MAP initiative is there to reduce crime, support families, and strengthen the community. So my partners that I named earlier today um, are part of that MAP program. Can you go to the next slide for me? Um, the MAP program has been a great asset to the city. My colleagues um, work in 15 NYCHA developments in Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island, and the Bronx. Um, <clears throat> and provide services not only to kinship caregivers, but to seniors and their families in the community. Um, they, my colleagues are on premises, on site. Um, and if you need assistance, by all means, let us know. And, and if you have a senior or a kinship care family in one of these developments, and sometimes even some of the other NYCHA developments, we'll be more than happy to assist. Next slide, please. So GRC, the Grandparent Resource Center and the MAP team, we are always on the ground. Um, my colleagues, the community advocates do outreach. They provide in-person assistance. They conduct websites. They collaborate with other government and nonprofit agencies. They plan events and we plan events, we plan events. We plan fun events. We have a, a few things coming up. Um, we may be having a coat drive shortly um christmas and other holidays are coming so we're going to have lots of events coming up we're still um even though it's the end of the month we still have lots of kinship um national kinship care month um events coming up um and as a result of covid we have transitioned into doing a lot of virtual and phone-based work but now we're starting to transition into doing more in person so you can see one of my colleagues at one of those sites that were listed if you need assistance. Uh, next slide, please. So I have some case scenarios. We don't necessarily have to go into those. Um, I wasn't sure if, um, if we needed to know more about like what kind of situations come up where we would need to help. Um, so let me just, I'll just read the first one. And then we'll take some time for questions. And David, Barry, you guys tell me how much time I have. Um, <clears throat> but um, next slide for me, please. So let me just give you one case scenario. And then I'll you're talk doing fine. You're doing fine, Brandy. I'm doing fine. Okay. And then I'll talk a little bit more about some other stuff. 
Okay. <clears throat> so um, here's a case scenario. Um, these are some of the questions that we get um, on our hotline. We have a, a, a grandparent resource center hotline. Um, that number is, and one of my colleagues will put it in the chat and is also listed here, I believe, um, in the PowerPoint um, is 212-442-1094. That's the Grandparent Resource Center hotline. You'll get a friendly voice who will answer the phone. We usually like, we like to call it a warm line because we're warm and friendly, right? Um, you'll get a, a, a warm and friendly person to answer, answer your questions or um, transfer you over to one of the experts, myself or one of my colleagues, who can help you with, a, with um, any kind of caregiver or senior situation. Um, so um, Miss J is currently raising her seven children. That's right, seven grandchildren. She is also caring for her disabled husband. She is in her late 60s. Her husband is in his 70s. They are raising two of their, uh, two of their daughter's children. So the children in the household are some are siblings, some are cousins, right? Because it's two different daughters, right? Um, and they're all under the same roof. Both daughters suffer from mental illness um, and have not been suitable caregivers to their multiple children. The children have been in and out of foster care and a few of the children have been molested and lived in unpleasant conditions while in foster care. Um, so sometimes foster care, um, there are some ups and downs in foster care. Um, of course, we advocate for kinship foster care, but in this situation, um, there weren't a lot of ups, there were some downs. Um, but for the last five years, Miss J has fought to get all of her grandchildren out of foster care um, and into her home and into more stable conditions um, outside of their mother's homes and under one roof. Um, in this case, we need a lot of assistance here because um, there's a lot of stuff going on. Each child has their own issue. Grandma has, has some stuff, have her own stuff. Then she's caring for a disabled husband. And now all of those folks are all under one roof. So in this case, um, ACS and CPS is involved. Um, the foster care system is involved. The New York State Court, family court to be exact. Um, the Department of Education in terms of the child's education. Um, so there are a lot of players here in order to make this um, kinship care family. Um, and in this case, grandma is getting um, kinship foster care funds, make this whole um, family, um, caregiving family work. Um, there's a lot of systems in place here. So it involves a lot of hands-on, high touch, a great deal of casework um, in order to work with this particular family. Um, so, Next slide for me, please. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about a, a, a low touch or a medium touch case so you understand what we get. So here's a low touch case. So sometimes we get lots and lots of phone calls um, at the um, GRC warm line. And this one, grandma is in her forties. Um, she is a New York City employee. She's a teacher. She has a daughter in her twenties who has three children. Um, grandma has noticed that her daughter has been neglecting the children. They're missing school, their clothes and hair is unkempt. Uh, mom's boyfriend is known for using drugs and her daughter had a black eye the last time she saw her. Grandma calls us, the GRC, and asks, what are her rights as a grandmother? What should she do? What should she say to her daughter? We get many phone calls like that um, here at the Grandparent Resource Center asking us, what, what can I do? How can I help my daughter? How can I help my son? Um, I just found out that my um, great niece and nephew um, are um, in foster care. We get lots and lots of calls like that. Um, but this situation, grandma wants to know, what can I do about my daughter? Um, so here she needs to, we're gonna provide some information on custody and guardianship. What's the difference, right? We're gonna counsel her a little bit about how to approach her daughter on this situation. Um, provide her with info on filing a petition for custody and guardianship. Um, which is different. First, we're going to talk to her about what custody and guardianship is. Then we're going to talk to her about filing a petition and what that means. Um, we're going to talk about the, the dynamics of that particular family. Um, in some situations, filing a petition for custody or guardianship could be dangerous um, for, for the person who's actually doing the filing. So we need to be careful about that family dynamic. Um, I need to provide info 
um, to grandma, if she feels like she needs to call um, ACS based on her observation of the children. Um, and I'm also gonna give her, of course, the telephone number to the child abuse hotline. So those are just two examples of what, um, what kind of phone calls we get at the Grandparent Resource Center. Um, but again, we're always available um, to, to listen, to answer your calls. So David's asking me to wrap it up a bit so that I can answer some questions. Um, so in a, in a little nutshell, I gave you a lot of bit and a little bit about what kinship care is about. Um, kinship care is a vast system um, that has a lot of um, information, resources, and laws, and, and lots of key players between um, ACS and HRA and um, the DOE and the court system, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but please note that not every family, um, not every family has any AC, has ACS involvement. Most families do not have any ACS involvement. Um, it could be a situation where mom says, um, hey, to her mother, hey, mom, I'm going to the store and I'll be right back. And then two hours turns into two weeks, two weeks turns into two months, two months turns into two years. So not every family has an ACS issue. Most families are raising their uh, relative um, informally. Um, and, uh, but the situations can still be sticky, even though there's not any ACS involvement. But I just wanted you guys to know how special and wonderful our kinship caregivers and grandparents are where they change their lives in order to raise their grandchildren or their niece or their nephew or their godchild. Um, so we wanna thank you today for coming to learn more about kinship care. Um, we wanna again, thank all of our kinship caregivers who are on the line. Thank you for devoting your lives to your grandchildren or your niece or your nephew. Um, I wanna thank my colleagues again. I wanna thank David. Um, and I'm wrapping it up so that we can answer some questions. So and, wow. and there's a helpful links page here. I'm sorry, David, there's a helpful links page here that you can click on. I think some stuff has been added to the chat. Um, and again, we're always available to answer questions. So thank you, Brandy. Thank you, Grandparents Resource Center and Helen Flowers uh, and Department for the Aging for such an informative, comprehensive discussion on kinship care. I hope every, I, I know I learned a huge amount and I, and I see you guys all the time. So that, that's, it's amazing. Uh, and I wanna let everybody know that all the resources that you see here will be um, sent to you after the chat, probably by the end of the week or beginning of next week. Uh, with links, a survey for about today's presentation, and um, uh, links to the video that you saw of Brandy. So if you needed to catch things or wanted to slow it down, you can do it in your own time. Um, and also you can view any of the other presentations uh, on your own time as well. Um, we didn't really, Brandy, I have to say, people were, the, the number one thing, I, I was gonna introduce Barry, who's our Q&A guy, we didn't really get a lot of questions because you were very comprehensive in, in your presentation. Um, Barry, I don't think I saw, I saw one question. That was about it. Barry, I you're think on you're, on mute. you're on mute, Barry. Yes, there was only that one question about how to register for the empowerment series, which was answered. So um, other than oh. that, I have one question. I have sure, one question. Barry. You want to do it? You had mentioned early on a term, and I'm not sure I caught it correctly, which was subsidized guardianship, and whether that was different than whatever I captured was different than the child-only public assistance. It is. Okay. So the child-only public assistance refers to um, folks who may have um, informal care, custody, or guardianship. The subsidized guardianship is only for someone who has a... So a caregiver, a kinship caregiver is caring for a child who's in foster care. And that child has been in foster care for six months or more living in their home. The court system can now transition them to where the child is no longer in foster care. And then the kinship caregiver gets guardianship. That guardianship now comes with a subsidy. 
right? So that's why we say subsidized guardianship, right? Okay. So the money has transitioned. So when it's no longer kinship foster care funds, it goes into being subsidized guardianship. So that way that is, is actually a wonderful program that the state, uh, New York State and OCFS had developed about eight or nine years ago um, so that parents don't have to be TPR. TPR means termination of parental rights, right? So the parents' rights don't have to be taken away. In a lot of cases, parents may not be the best parent in the world, but they're not the worst, where they need to have their rights taken away, right? So this kind of keeps the family together, where grandma or auntie has guardianship and mom is still able to visit. Dad is still able to visit. They can still be a family, right? So, and then they can also still get a subsidy to help them carry on. Excellent, thank you. That was the one question I had, David. Yes, so we want to again thank Brandy for, for her expertise. Please do call the Grandparents Resource Center. The number was provided several times. You want to give the number out again, Brandy, in case people want to call your hotline, sure. your warm line. Our warm line, because we're warm and friendly. 212-442-1094. Um, yes. <laughs> 212-442-1094. I'm so sorry. I want to thank, I thank the Grandparents Resource Center, thank PSS, and I want to remind everybody that on Thursday is our last um, um, session for the upcoming, uh, for, the, for the previous um, spring summer session. Um, we're finishing our three-part series on end-of-life planning um, at 1 p.m. Um, and then uh, look for a, an email probably uh, in October um, for everyone to kind of give us new ideas about what you'd like to see on the second uh, year of our Chat with the Expert. Again, thanks to everybody. Have a wonderful day. Get outside and enjoy the nice weather, everybody. Bye. Thank thanks, you, everybody. Thanks, Awesome. Great job. Happy Kinship Care Month. Happy, Happy Grandparents Day.